Hey guys and welcome back. Today I got another nice Phoenix uh, headlight review for you. It's the HM65R in the uh, trail version, therefore the T. This one exists in two versions uh, that are nearly identical but still slightly different. I opted for this version as it has a, a sturdier headband and uh, slightly more output. But I will get into all the differences between this one and the normal version later in this review. It comes in a, a plastic box. I prefer the cardboard boxing because it's uh, more um, ecological. But uh, this also looks really nice. It comes with all the uh, technical specifications and information printed on the box as we know it. So this one has a maximum output of 1500 lumen. Maximum beam distance of 170 meters, powered by one 18650 that is uh, chargeable via a USB-C port. A few images uh, that show the head strap and so on. And then at the back we have the different output modes. So here the one of the main differences is uh, visible. This one has six output modes. Uh, the non-T version has 7, so this one has 1300 on the highest mode. If you combine now the high of the spot and the high of the float, you will get to 1500 lumen. I will measure that later in my Ulbricht ball and uh, let you guys know if it's true. The non-T version has 1000 lumen, 400 lumen, 130 lumen and another mode with 50 lumen. In the floodlight it has 400, 130 and 8 lumen. I also opted for this one because it has a lower low mode. Still I would wish for a moon mode. Uh, on a trail running uh, light it's not necessary but even on the non-trail version they have a higher uh, mode that uh, produces 8 lumen. In a headlight I always wish for a moon mode. So let's get the light out of the box. We have a little bit more plastic here. I think Phoenix can really change the game here in future flashlights that they bring it out in a recycled packaging or so to produce a little bit less of plastic waste. So we have the light. We have a little USB-C cable that is branded with Phoenix. We have the manual in different languages, we have the warranty card, and we have one spare O-ring. So the light itself is the same uh, as the non-trail version, uh, just that they uh, configure it the uh, user interface a little bit different with the, well not the user interface, but the, the light output modes. And then of course it's a complete different head strap. The non-trail version has uh, a band that goes over the top. Um, it is not as wide as this one, therefore this one is a little more comfy. And the light in total uh, weighs 91 grams. The non-trail version weighs 97 grams. So I'm not a trail runner, but I think every gram that you don't have on your forehead is a good gram. Uh, here again the notice that we should take away the battery protection before the first use. So we'll take that one off and then you can see how the battery is installed. This side we can open. You can remove the battery protection. We'll also have a look at the battery 3400 milliamp protected Phoenix battery so good quality batteries here we have a little pin at the bottom so I will try if uh, non button top batteries will fit and I will let you know and we have a spring at the back so they say that the light is quite impact resistant and will not uh, flicker while 
running on heavy terrain. The other side, unfortunately, it's not possible to dismantle and this is one of the points that I don't like too much about this light because if you unscrew this side, you can by unlocking this clip slide out the light but this plastic piece will stay connected to the light so it's not possible to change the head strap if some of this plastic will break so that's um, a bit annoying i would have wished for a better solution here maybe in the future i will try with pliers if i can open this one because it's probably only glued so that i could uh, take the light out of the head strap and install it uh, in another mount or maybe put it on a helmet without the head strap but uh, yeah in most cases you don't need it and uh, if something happens phoenix has a great warranty but still sometimes it's little design flaws that i like to criticize and yeah that's what i do the head strap is quite uh, innovative they even have a little plastic coating on the back here to protect the phoenix logo and also take that away and they say that you can operate it with one hand so you just turn it and as you can see it fits through like a charm so you can adjust it while running and you just push the button up or the knob up and you can unleash the rest of the head strap you put it back in and you can just start scrolling or turning it all back together again so that's a nice innovative head strap i don't think that there are much other high performance headlights out with such a unique uh, head strap design the build quality of the hm 65 rt is uh, again to the phoenix standard so pretty nice all the engravings are nicely done no sharp edges the plastic shield on top here protects the buttons from accidentally turning the light on and then once you are running you have one button for the flood and one button for the throw if you push the button once you have the battery indicator with four bars i already charged the battery here you have the usb c port which is nicely hidden and well protected by a firm usb cover to turn the light on a long press turn the light on or turn the spotlight on also with a long press long press to turn it off and single clicks to cycle through the different output modes so it's quite easy operating the light will always start in the lowest mode so it has no memory can show you turn it off low mode there's no double click to access any turbo or whatsoever long press does also nothing so there's no strobe or whatsoever it's quite basic i personally prefer lights with uh, memory mode and direct access to ultra low and direct access to turbo maybe phoenix will opt for that in the future um, but i know that there's a lot of people that really cherish uh, phoenix for their easy straight on user interface so that's not a real point of um, criticism it's just more that i i preferred the other way around but uh, that's for everyone to decide if you want to lock the flashlight you just need to push one or the two buttons for around three seconds then the float led blinks if you press one of the buttons it blinks again showing you that it is locked to unlock the flashlight you need to push both buttons 
together for around three seconds and then the floodlight will start blinking and then turn on so now it is unlocked a tail cap lockout is not working as you can see so i can unscrew it nearly to the end and the led will not turn off so the only way to lock this light is with the electronic lockout function and that's pretty much everything for the user interface of this light i would like to show you a little bit of the manual so um, for the cool white led that they use in the uh, spot led it's an sst40 and the uh, neutral white led used as a floodlight is an xpg 2s3 so here again i would also like to see neutral lights in the spotlight but somehow often those combined uh, lights always have one cool and one um, neutral or warm LED. I don't know why the manufacturers all do that. But yeah. So the weight we had 91 gram excluding the battery uh, I said before with the battery so I made a mistake there. Um, for the rest the size is uh, 80 millimeters in length, um, 47 millimeters in height and the tube diameter and the thickness is around 39 millimeters. It's always difficult with this uh, strange uh, shape, shaped lights to see which measurement is what, but for me it's not that important. They also say that you could use the light with two CR123A batteries and that you should not use it with uh, rechargeable uh, 16340 batteries. So I will only use it with 18650s to um, make sure that it will work at its best. And then uh, we can have a quick look at the battery level indication. So they say four lights on is 100%, three lights on 80 to 60%, two lights on 60 to 40 and one light on 40 to 20. Once it starts flashing, it's 20% uh, to zero. So then it's really time to change the battery. It also has an overheat uh, protection. So once it reaches 65 degrees or above, the light will step down. And uh, as soon as the temperature drops, it will uh, allow the reselection of the highest mode. So it will not ramp up on its own. So that's pretty much everything for the technical specifications and the user interface. I will also put all those uh, uh, informations in the video description below the video so that you can check them uh, at every time. I will now show you the charging function uh, with the USB-C port. So you need to tilt the head completely forward that the USB-C port is accessible and then you switch or plug the, the USB-C um, cable. As you can see it is uh, blinking now and uh, if the battery is fully drained it will blink from one to four LEDs. Now uh, it is nearly fully charged so only the last bar is blinking and once it's fully charged uh, all the four LEDs will uh, stay in solid blue. They say in the description that it takes about uh, three hours to fully charge one 3400 milliamp battery. I will wait now until it's fully charged, check all the uh, output modes in my Ulbricht ball and then I will show you the light outside in the forest when it's dark. Hey guys, I'm uh, outside now with the HM65RT in the highest uh, spot mode with 1300 lumen. I measured 1180 lumen. For those of you guys wondering where I am, I'm in Belgium in a natural cave. We upside down about 70 meters to get here. A few friends 
were slacklining the entire day here and uh, I took uh, the chance to show you this light in a cave. So pretty cool. I will dim down the light now to the lowest spotlight mode which is 130 lumen. I measured it with 120. Then we come up to 400 lumen mode which I measured with 370 lumen and then again the 1300 lumen mode. I will now activate the flood mode as well and show you in the highest mode with the two lights combined it's 1581 lumen in the medium mode it's 433 lumen and in the lowest mode it's 123 lumen if all the lights are combined i will now turn off the spotlight and show you the floodlight in the highest mode which is indicated with 400 lumen uh, i measured 436 lumen the Low mode is indicated with 5 lumen, I measured 3.95 and the medium mode with 70 lumen, I measured with 68 lumen. So overall it's a really nice light. I would have wished if they uh, would produce it completely in neutral white and if uh, the light would have direct access to low and turbo in each uh, spot or in each LED mode. So overall a great light but they could do a little or they could do a few improvements. I hope you like this review. I need to go up again now so it's gonna be quite exhausting. If there are any questions left don't hesitate to put them in the comment section and as always subscribe to my channel and leave a thumbs up. See you soon guys. Bye bye.